Hey, welcome to day five. My name is John. It is great to see you guys. Some of you, uh, you've already been tracking along with us. Some of you, this is your first uh, video devotional as we are in the Lenten season. And uh, here's what we're agreeing with. Dismissing Lent is just as bad as demanding Lent. So we decided we're not going to do either of those things. We're not going to dismiss Lent and say, ah, whatever, that's something uh, I used to have to do. Uh, And we're also not going to demand Lent, saying this is something I have to do. Right? We're not going to do either of those. We're going to choose to train for transformation. And one of the ways annually we get an opportunity to train for transformation is to engage in the Lenten season. It prepares our hearts for Easter. And so that's what we're doing uh, every single day. Real simple, in less than 10 minutes, uh, I'm walking you through uh, a devotional. And so we are following along with the One Year Bible. Uh, this is the One Year Bible right here that I have uh, from our friends at Tyndale. And so you can open up to today's reading And if you do, you open up to today's reading, what you're going to see every single day is there's an Old Testament, New Testament psalm or proverb. What I do in advance, I read today's reading, and then I kind of look at what stands out the most, and I make some observations on that. You can do this as well, but I'm kind of helping you uh, get started. And so here's today's uh, reading. If you open up, um, the part that stood out to me today, you can kind of see a whole bunch of probably uh, highlighted parts uh, in in my one-year Bible, is... Uh, the Old Testament section. Uh, Tomorrow, uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to receive communion together on video like this, just giving you a heads up. Uh, Stephen Abraham is going to join me uh, for the devotional. We're going to have a great conversation, and then we're going to receive communion. That's tomorrow, and the reason is is because tomorrow in the New Testament reading, uh, you're going to see that they're celebrating Passover during Holy Week. Uh, That's the Wednesday before Good Friday. So that's in tomorrow's New Testament reading that we'll do. Today, in our Old Testament reading, what's cool is if you open up to the Old Testament section, you'll see that today's reading is Numbers 8. Uh, the num- Numbers is a book in the Old Testament. Numbers 8, chapter 8, and chapter 9. Oftentimes, here's the deal, when you do the one-year Bible, you'll do the Old Testament section, and a lot of times scratch your head. You're like, what in the heck is that all about? Uh, The Bible Project can certainly help you on those days. Today, I want to double-click on the Old Testament reading, specifically chapter 9. And so if you turn there, if you're driving, don't try to do that. I'm just going to read this to you. It says this in chapter 9. So this is Numbers, the Old Testament book, Numbers, chapter 9, verse 1. The Lord spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai. And so uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of Old Testament history here. Uh, God's people, the nation of Israel, they were enslaved for 400 and call it 80 years in a place called Egypt. Uh, They were slaves there. And you probably uh, maybe saw the Disney movie or you can remember in Old Testament history where God ended up uh, to deliver his people because he is true to his promise. God sent 10 plagues, uh, 10 plagues. And you could read of this in your own time. They're very creative, uh, what God did to free his people. God certainly used this guy named Moses, right? Maybe you've heard of Moses before. God used Moses to really be the mouthpiece of God to lead the people out of slavery into freedom. So the nine plagues happen, and they're all building to, toward the tenth and final plague. Uh, the tenth and final plague is very intense. It's unique as well because it not only uh, affects those in Egypt, the Egyptians, but this 10th and final plague is the only plague that included Israel, the Jews. So the other nine plagues didn't touch the Jews. It was like it didn't affect them at all. But the 10th plague, God speaks to his people and says, all right, this one's an all skate. This is going to affect everyone. And so listen up. Um, Here's what's going to happen. You need to sacrifice. He was very clear on this. Uh, you need to sacrifice a spotless lamb, a spotless lamb, one-year-old lamb, and you need to take its blood, the blood of the lamb, and you are to spread that blood over the door frames of your home. This is interesting. Uh, God is a God that is holy and just, but we see with the 10th with the tenth plague, he's also a God who is merciful. God was clear. God gave them the opportunity to do this. And so this is the history, and certainly in Numbers 9, they remember this. Here's what's interesting. Numbers 9, what we're about to read, when God speaks to Moses at Mount Sinai, this is a one-year anniversary of this moment that I'm telling you about. Uh, That moment was quite fresh in their mind. They remembered that tenth and final plague. Uh, Certainly, if you were the firstborn son of that family, right? You're like, Dad, I hope you're listening. 
And so this is what these families did. They would kill that uh, one-year-old spotless lamb. They took the blood. They spread it over the door frames of their home. And what God did was what God said he would do. He passed over those homes. The, the firstborn male of that home was not killed. Now, this probably brings up a ton of questions that we don't have time to get into. The most important part for you to understand is it required, listen, it required the blood of another, the blood of another for them to be saved. This should, like, sirens, signals, all kinds of things in your mind should be going off right now. Oh, my goodness, yes. This was the substitutionary atonement. It was the blood of a lamb, a spotless lamb, a perfect lamb that was required to appease, to satisfy our perfect and holy God, his wrath, which is a very real thing. And so this is what happened. God passed over those homes. Sometimes you've heard of Passover before and you're like, I don't know what it means. That's what it means. God passed over those homes where God saw the perfect blood of the lamb over the door frames of their homes. Um, I hope this is answering some questions. Uh, when you've received communion, you're wondering, like, is this a, like a new thing or a Christian thing? Well, actually, this is rooted in Old Testament history, uh, specifically the 10th plague um, uh, of freeing God's people. And so here's the deal. They, they do it. Uh, they, they put the blood over the door frames. God passes over just as he said he would. The people are freed. They cross through. Uh, God opens the sea. Maybe you know that story. And now they're in the desert wandering around. It's a one-year anniversary. God speaks on the one-year anniversary to Moses. Okay, that's a little bit of a backdrop. Uh, in the desert of Sinai, the first month of the second year that they came out of Egypt, he said this, have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time. Celebrate it at the appointed time at twilight on the 14th day of this month in accordance with all its rules and regulations. Uh, this is important. God's clear. Verse 4. So Moses told the Israelites to celebrate the Passover. We're going to celebrate this. We're going to look back just a year ago and remember how good and just and fair God was because of the blood of another, the blood of a spotless lamb. God passed over our homes. They celebrate this, and they did so in the desert of Sinai at twilight on the 14th day of the first month. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord commanded Moses. Now, if you'll skip down, I want to read to you verse 11, verse 11 of chapter 9. This is interesting. Uh, they have questions about this, and God answers these questions through Moses. Uh, then it says this, they are to eat the lamb together with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Look at verse 12. They must not leave any of it till morning or break any of its bones. So now they're talking about the Passover, to where the lamb has been killed, and now this lamb is roasted over the fire, and then they eat this lamb. But isn't it interesting that they say they must not leave any of it till morning in the second part or break any of its bones? Again, as you and I are on this journey toward the cross, uh, some like bells and whistles should go off in our mind. Wait a second, why wouldn't they break any of its bones or legs? Here's what's cool. Uh, May 31st, I went ahead uh, before we hit record to look of when you're going to read about this. But on May 31st, when you guys get to May 31st, you're going to actually read of how amazing this is of what they say happened on the cross of Christ. Uh, on May 31st, your reading, your New Testament reading will be the Gospel of John chapter 19. Let me read this to you. So on May 31st, in the Gospel of John, it's them telling us, or John telling us of the crucifixion of Christ. The perfect spotless lamb whose blood spread over the doorframe of your heart causes a God who is holy and just to pass over. Now, wrath that is due to you and me because of our sinful nature, it's been taken care of because of the blood of the lamb. The blood of another was required. So interesting. And what it tells us in the Gospel of John is that when Jesus was on the cross, here's what it says. It says, the soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man. This is what they did. This was customary. This is how they crucified people. They came and they would break the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus and then those of the other. But, verse 33, but when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, check it out, they did not break his legs. If you were a Jew and you celebrated the Passover every single year, these specific details were meant to prepare your heart for not just to celebrate Passover, 
but for the day when God would send his Messiah who would fulfill Passover. In tomorrow's reading, we're about to see why are we on this journey toward the cross? Every single year, Jews all over the world would journey to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. This is the Wednesday of Holy Week. Jesus was there in Jerusalem, not just to celebrate it. He was there to fulfill it. He is the Passover. I hope you guys check it out tomorrow as we dive in. Have a great day.